Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to talk about the Sony ZV-1F. This is a very small, pocketable, video-centric camera that is very budget-friendly, and it has a lot of great options, which is why I'm talking about it here. I'm going to give you examples of me shooting this in vlog-type situations, using steady shot, using different microphones, and hopefully this video will help you answer the question, is this a great camera for video creators? So let's talk about the camera itself. It's very small. As you can see, I do have an, a grip attachment on the camera. This grip attachment with base plate from Small Rig allows me to add a little bit of protection on the bottom of the camera, as well as adding a grip, which gives it a little bit more to hold on to. This camera is so small that without this grip, it just doesn't feel very safe and secure in my hands. So I put the Small Rig grip on it, and that is uh, what you see here. Also, there is a little plate for my tripod, which I'll talk about here in a moment. Other than that, this camera is extremely small and pocketable. It has a fixed 20 millimeter lens on it, which means that this lens does not have any zoom inside of the lens itself. The camera does have a little bit of digital zoom and you can adjust that zoom with the rocker right here. This camera takes 20.1 megapixel images. So it is a photography camera as well and could take great images. On top of that, it shoots 4K up to 30P and also at 24P. So these are two options that you can use for shooting 4K video and it does a great job at that. There are also a lot of 1080 features as well within this camera, but I primarily shoot in 4K. So I was shooting in 4K 30. Now the camera features a pop-out articulating screen Screen, and so that screen can rotate around and as you can see it can go into kind of a, a vlog mode here or it can pop around to the back and I can use it as a traditional viewfinder. What's great about that is that if you're shooting photos or you're shooting B-roll video, you can have it in this mode, or if you need to, you can pop it out and rotate it around and get those low shots by tilting the screen up, or you can rotate the screen all the way around and get into that first person vlogging type of format for shooting vlog video. Now the camera also has some slow-mo mode. It has a 5X slow-mo and a 60X hyperlapse mode that can be used. These are at lower resolution though, but they're really cool features to have on this camera. It has a microphone that's built in, and this microphone is a lot better than other microphones on small cameras like this. This microphone is designed for good audio capture, especially with subjects that are relatively close, I mean, as most onboard microphones. But if you just went with this camera and vlogged with it, you're gonna get decent audio quality. I'll give you some examples here in a moment. Now, you can also attach external microphones. We have a cold shoe mount right here, and so I could put an external microphone like the Rode Video Micro 2. All I have to do is slide the Rode Video Micro 2 right into that slot and tighten it down, and then plug the microphone into the microphone jack here. That's gonna give me even better audio out of such a small camera for a decent price. So I'll make sure to link to the microphone down below. I think you're gonna like the differences in the audio quality as I give you a demo a little bit here in the video. So there are some onboard controls on this camera. We have menu, function button, we have our dial here, and then of course that is a four position dial with a center button. And then we have our recall and our trash can button here as well. On the top of the camera, we have our power button. We also have our mode switch, which allows us to go between photography, video, and SNQ mode, which is one of those modes for that slow motion. We have a nice large recording button here. Since this is a video centric camera, that recording button is very easy to get to. Uh, but then we also have our shutter button here in the middle of our zoom rocker. So this zoom rocker will zoom in and zoom out. And we have a shutter button here that you can press down to grab focus and then press down the rest of the way, just like a traditional shutter button for photography mode. And it does take those 20 megapixel images, 20.1 megapixels, which is pretty good for a camera of this size. And then we have our background defocus button, which allows us to utilize the camera's technology to blur out the background. And so if you want a clear background or you want a blurry background, you could just press that button. It also is the C1 button, which means it can be programmed to do something else. Overall, this camera is extremely compact and very powerful for what it is able to accomplish. With this camera, 
I used it with the Rode Video Micro most of the time to grab some on the go vlog shots. That's what this camera is great for, for those moments when you want a small compact footprint, you wanna be able to vlog and grab great images on the go. This camera is a good option for that. Now, hand holding this camera in a vlogging format is kind of tricky. So I use this attachment from PGY Tech, which is why I have this attachment on the bottom here. All I have to do is snap this right into the camera like so and slide the little lock slider over like that. And now I have a handle that's very easy to hold on to. This also is a tripod. So this can pop out and then this becomes a tripod, which makes it super useful for filming in a lot of different environments. And then I can adjust this as well and go even lower and then slide this up and adjust this at any angle. And on top of that, there's also a ball head right here. And this ball head allows me to adjust the camera at all sorts of different angles. So regardless of what you need to mount to or where you need to set your camera up, this is gonna be a great option for you. And it's something that I use all of the time. There's also a cold shoe mount on the side of the tripod so I could uh, detach my microphone and actually move it down here if I wanted. A lot of times I will use this camera with a wireless mic. I have the Rode Wireless Go set up. And instead of putting that on the camera, I will just mount it on the side of the tripod here. And then when I'm connected to the tripod with the camera on the tripod, I will plug it in. And then when I want to use the camera aside from the tripod, all I have to do is unplug the microphone and then take the camera right off and it's ready to go. That's what's great about a system like this is that if I need something small and compact, I could put this camera right in my pocket as it sits and it's uh, gonna fit in my pocket. It's not a problem. It's barely bigger than a cell phone. Of course it is thicker than a cell phone, but as far as its footprint, I mean, my phone is significantly larger than this. If you look at the phone and the camera side by side, the camera is just thicker and that is it. And so that's what's great about something like this. It's very pocketable, it doesn't get in the way, and it's very easy to maneuver with. So let's go and shoot some vlog content. Now I'm in a little bit more of a basic vlog type of scenario where I might be sitting on a chair in a room with a little bit of window light, talking directly into the camera. Now in this instance, I'm handheld. I have the steady shot turned on. I'm shooting with manual settings at 1 100th of a second, f2.0 for as shallow of depth of field as I can get, and the ISO is 125. I'm also using the camera's internal microphone, so there's no additional microphone attached. But now I've attached the Rode Video Micro version two. This is the second edition of this microphone. It's a small shotgun microphone that adds a little bit to this camera, but definitely adds a improved audio quality and also cancels out some of the background noise. That's what a shotgun microphone does. So in a scenario where you're vlogging, talking directly to the camera, and you're not always in control of your environment, you might wanna use a microphone like this. And I'd have to say some of the benefits of this camera is its size. It is extremely small and simple to use. Now, the lens is fixed, which means you have a little bit of a zoom range, which is digital zoom. So you can see I can zoom in here 1.5 and I can zoom back out. And that is the zoom range that I get. That is digital zoom, which means it's happening inside the camera with software. It's not actually zooming, utilizing the lens. So as you zoom in, you lose a little bit of that quality, but that is par for the course. With a camera this small and compact, you're going to only get zoom digitally. So it's a great feature to have, but it's definitely not something to rely upon. This camera's lens is going to be the most sharp at its widest. And so as you zoom in digitally, that's when you start to lose a little bit of that detail. Now this lens does have an f2.0 aperture, which is pretty great. That's a pretty fast aperture, which is gonna let a lot of light in, and it's gonna help blur out the background to minimize distractions. And so when you're shooting, if you're shooting in automatic mode, automatic mode is definitely going to change the camera settings based on what it thinks is best uh, for that scene and making sure that the scene is exposed properly. 
However, if you want to take control over your camera and have a shallow depth of field and try to make the picture look the best coming out of this camera, you're going to need to go into manual settings. Now, if you want to learn how to use manual settings on your camera, I have a free course for you called Ditch Auto. You can get the link to it down in the description below. That course will teach you everything you need to know about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO so that you can control those settings and get the best image overall. However, this camera does a pretty good job even if you put it in one of the manual assist modes like aperture priority or shutter priority. Those are two other modes that we talk about in the course. And so you really can get a great image out of this camera so long as you have a decent lighting source. I'm just sitting right next to a window and the light that's coming through that window is really reflecting off of a green tree and so it is casting a bit of a uh, kind of yellow greenish color on me. And so if you have decent light, uh, sufficient light, you're gonna have an overall decent looking image with this camera because it really is a great camera for its size and its price point. Now I'm shooting outside on a very bright and somewhat windy day with the ZV-1F uh, connected to the Rode Video Micro 2. And that microphone is gonna help additionally in canceling out some of the wind noise and the background noise as people might be driving by or walking by. So with this camera in a bright situation like this, whether you're shooting in manual settings or in automatic settings, you're probably going to want to attach an ND filter onto the front of the lens. Right now, the settings that I'm at so that I can have a shallow depth of field is 1 2500th of a second, which is a really, really fast shutter speed and is not the best option for shooting video. So an ND filter would be great, and that's something that you would thread onto the front of the lens. And then, of course, you can take it off when you're shooting in lower light situations. But I think this camera is doing a pretty darn good job considering how bright it is out right now. And uh, all things considered, I'm pretty impressed. So what did you think about those audio quality tests? Let me know down in the comment section below uh, how well you thought this camera is performing so far. So who's this camera for? Well, it's for the creator who is maybe just getting started or wants an additional camera that is easy to grab and go. And you don't have to worry about all the accessories. Even though I have some accessories here, these are fairly simple in comparison to some of the things that you can attach on bigger cameras. This camera right here is for those who don't want to take a lot with them, but want good image quality and audio quality as well. The ZV-1F is very friendly on the budget right now at $500, and sometimes you can get it a little bit less than that. I've got links to B&H Photo and Amazon down in the description below, so make sure to check out those links to see the pricing and options with this camera. I've also got links to some of the accessories that I've shown you in this video, as well as the SD card that I recommend using in this camera. So let me know what you think about this type of camera. This is a great option, and as Sony is building out camera options for pretty much everybody under the sun, this is yet another option that we have as a tool for capturing and creating on the go. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section. If you have any questions at all, make sure to ask, and definitely make sure to check out my free course, Ditch Auto, so you can learn camera settings and better learn how to shoot with a camera like this. We'll see you in the next video.